don't be complacent about it. You know, I think a lot of people, especially in our business, like you'll, you'll find an agent and you'll find a manager and then you'll be like, okay, they're doing all the work. Like they're going to, they're going to, the phone's going to ring and they're going to call me and tell me I'm famous. Like they're going to tell me I'm on, you know, and that just doesn't happen. Right. Like you have, you, no one's going to be as motivated and as interested in your career as you are. Are you an aspiring creative in entertainment, business, fashion, design, or the arts? Do you want to elevate your creative passion project to the next level? Then this show is for you. Whether you want a career in television, film, radio, literature, music, or beyond, Creative Breakthrough will show you how to take your dreams and turn them into reality. This show will not only leave you feeling motivated and inspired, but also provide you real-life tools to pursue the creative journey you have always wanted. I'm your host, creative coach, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassab, a.k.a. The Funny Brown Girl. Yes, I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle. I'm so excited, y'all. Today, we get to talk to Rizwan Munji, best known for playing Rajiv, the scheming assistant manager of a call center in the NBC comedy Outsourced. Part of the network's prestigious Thursday night comedy lineup, this groundbreaking TV show was the first American sitcom to be based in India and feature a predominantly Indian cast. Rizwan has also appeared on many popular TV shows, including Glee, Arrested Development, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Without a Trace, 24, NCIS, Bones, Privileged, and Better of Ted. Other memorable credits include The Wolf of Wall Street, The Dictator, Transformers, and the critically acclaimed film, Patterson. Currently, Rizwan can be seen on the pop TV sitcom, Schitt's Creek, Sci-Fi's The Magician, USA's Mr. Robot, and Rob Giggle's Ski Master Academy. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started! Welcome to the guest chair, Riz. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I want to start from the beginning. I love asking my guests this question, and I'd love to know when and how did your creative journey start? Wow. Um, <laughs> I probably, I, I like to say that it was in, they call it middle school here, but we call it junior high school in uh, Canada. And uh, in junior high school, what would happen is that we were asked to pick options so we do the regular, like in school, you do like math and science and English and all that stuff. Then you have to pick some options. And I did not pick drama the first year in seventh grade. I picked uh, a band because I thought, oh, I sh- I, I'll get to play the drums. Uh, and I was like, oh, that'd be so much fun. And I didn't get chosen to, to, to play the drums. I got chosen to play the clarinet. And for whatever reason, I would like eat the reed. And it was I, I was the worst clarinet player ever. And then I decided that just wasn't for me. I wasn't going to do band. So then I decided, well, what's something else that's easy? And I took drama. And I kind of <laughs> like fell in love with it. I got cast as the lead in the play. And uh, all of a sudden I was like, wait, this is something I could actually do and have fun. So I think that's where it started. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And now your parents are immigrants from Tanzania. How did they react that you wanted to do acting? So, you know, I... I like to say that they never, they never were like no, you know, which is what the the sort of stereotype is. But along with the stereotype, they weren't also like yes, you know, <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't very excited about it. They, I think their their line was, um, you you have to get a degree, just get a degree in something as a backup, and then you can do what you want to do, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that they always thought that. At some point, I would realize that this was not a good idea. So they were they were sort of being manipulative in a way, like, "Oh yeah, sure, this is crazy. Why don't you do this, and then you'll realize that this is insane, and uh, and you'll move on." But uh, I guess I just never moved on. <laughs> well, that's awesome. We're glad you didn't. Thank you. So you graduated from high school, and then you attended American Musical and Dramatic Academy. So walk us through, like. 
how that set you up for what you did next with your career? So I didn't go to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy right away. I actually oh, okay. went to the University of Alberta for a year. So I didn't stalk you correctly. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know how many people know this, but like I went, I, I did listen to my parents and I went to a year at the University of Alberta. And I was a pretty good student in high school. Uh, because there was just ru- there was rules in high school, right? Like you had to go to the classes, you had to go and do the stuff. So I was I, w- I actually would go, and you know I didn't want to get in trouble. But then once I got to university, there really wasn't any like attendance. There was no you know there was nobody keeping a check on you. And I I kind of realized very early on that I was just interested in going to the drama classes. Like I was in I think two drama classes, and then that and statistics, which I loved. Uh, I would only go to those classes, and then I was doing very badly in everything else, and. Uh, I just thought, you know, I want to I want to do something more concentrated in theater. Like that's what I want to do. And uh then I saw an ad at the University of Alberta for AMDA, which is the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, and uh they were having auditions in Seattle at the time only. They were only having auditions in the United States, and I asked my parents if me and my sister could drive to Seattle from Edmonton, which is where I was, and they were like, "Absolutely not! You're not doing that." And um, then I just I called the school, and I'm like, "Hey, is it possible? Like, is there some other way I can't make it to Seattle?" They were like, "Look, if uh, if you want to videotape an audition for us, that was was on VHS at that time. <laughs> you want to like." Uh, uh, send us a VHS if for whatever reason we don't find enough people they were auditioning all over the United States if we don't find enough people we will look at your VHS and we'll move from there and then I ended up like doing it and I ended up getting in so I was very excited about that that's awesome and so then did you move after you finished there did you move immediately to LA or how did that process work so um, no you're talking about after AMDA yes uh no i actually stayed in i lived in new york for 13 years wow okay yes so i graduated in 1995 <laughs> 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 and uh yeah and then i basically i got a i got a theater jo- i got an, uh, a job uh right in my last semester so i missed I missed a little bit of the last semester. I graduated, but I didn't get to go to the actual graduation. And sort of, it was it was in Virginia. I was in Mil- uh, Roanoke, Virginia. I ended up you know, got a small part in Romeo and Juliet. And then from there, I just ended up getting a lot of like theater work. I, either there was something that was traveling across the United States, but I, my home base was New York, and I just lived in New York for thirteen years. Thirteen years passed, and you were in LA. How long were you in LA before you you got on the hit NBC show Outsource? 2005 at the end of 2005 uh my wife and i we we drove across country and we're like okay we're gonna now live in um in la and she ended up getting a job back in new york so once we drove again we drove all the way to la and then she ended up getting a job in new york and uh so we were just sort of doing like back and forth and uh, i I officially, we officially decided to move to to LA in 2006, and I didn't book outsource until 2010. Okay, so about four years. I mean, I wasn't doing <laughs> I wasn't doing nothing. I, I had done, I was I was doing stuff. I mean, I know you, and not know you, know you, but I first saw you on American Daisy. Oh yeah, long time ago, nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a while back. That was a cra- that was a crazy, crazy, crazy time. Um, yeah, it was it was uh, amazing and just this independent film that we thought, you know, nothing's going to happen with this. You know, there was the budget I think was like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the to to shoot this movie. All these people we were getting paid absolutely nothing, even the crew, the everybody, and uh, we just said, oh, we're just going to have fun. And it actually ended up being uh, uh, bigger than we thought it was. We were just surprised by what happened. <laughs> And what what do you think made it so big? Was it just the community really coming behind it? Or? You know what? The community came behind it. But I think that um, what happened was, was really at that time, there wasn't anything like it. You know what I mean? There was nothing mm-hmm. that was sort of, there had been a few here and there, but nothing that was sort of like, you know, just a fun romantic comedy about like the South Asians in America there just hadn't been anything like that. And uh, there was definitely a thirst for it in the, in the South Asian community, but also the, 
the the national news picked it up right like they there was like the reviews in the new york times and there was really like uh, they, they just stuff that w- at that time nothing we had not seen any of that for for us right like we like mm-hmm. it was the first time that the new york times had you know put my name in the paper and they were talking like it was like an interesting it was a very uh interesting that it that it got this attention and you know credit to the people who were doing the pr for it and just recognizing that people were going to we're gonna we're gonna respond to it right no and i mean that makes sense because like this you this was way before even like mindy kaling hassan minaj aziz ansari so like you were paving the way for the rest of us oh well Thank you for that. <laughs> I don't know if I would go that <laughs> far, but sure. Thanks. I'll take the well, compliment. You were, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you when you were on Outsource, were you the first South Asian on a network TV show? No, um, so when we were on, actually, uh, Aziz was on Parks and Recreation. So Parks and Recreation actually came was what came on before us, and Mindy was on the really? office. Yeah. Uh, Parks and Recreation huh, was I feel like those were so much later. No, yeah, Parks and Recreation came out. Actually, that was a lot of the 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 negative feedback that we got for the show, uh, and uh, a lot of the the hate that ended up happening was because we ended up replacing Parks and Recreation on the schedule in the fall of 2010. So oh, wow. yeah, and um, and uh, people were not happy because it. it was a bit, <laughs> though it wasn't a big ratings uh, grab grabber. Parks and Recreation was a cult hit and people loved it, right? And even though right. technically, like when you look back, we did better in the ratings than they did. They just had this like cult following, and um, and yeah, that was a. Uh, I remember the first question we we went for a press uh, upfronts in New York. This whole all the press is there and they're asking you know all these questions to all the new shows and. Uh, um, the first question to to me was, well, how does it feel to replace Parks and Recreation, a show that everybody loves off the air? Like, what do you have to say for yourself? And I'm like, oh, no. um, you know, how do you respond to that? <laughs> so. That's so funny. So now on Outsource, you play you play a South Asian character. Do you feel like you you get stereotypical roles like that, and how do you deal with them? Um, you know. I mean that show was based on it, so yeah. it's not the no, right. I have a, look when when starting out, it definitely it definitely was that. It definitely uh, there definitely was a lot of that. And yes, outsource was a little bit of that. I mean, I'm I'm Indian. There's no, it's not like I'm trying <laughs> to hide it, right? And um, but you know, I feel lucky that throughout, uh, you know, just a even before outsource, like in 2008, I was on a show. It was the first time that I was a recurring on a show and I had done like, you know, 10 episodes. Um, and I played a character named Rami on this CW show called Privileged. And I remember going into the audition and I knew the cast director cause I had, um, I had met, uh, him earlier, Patrick Rush. Uh, I almost got cast in Chuck, that show that was on NBC. And he, he remembered me from that. And he called me in and I did it. I did the role, the role, which, you know, it, it was, there was no, um, character. Like it wasn't like he was South Asian or anything like that. They were just like, Hey, this is a, he's the, he's the butler of the house. And I, because everything I had done had been with an accent until that point, I was like, Oh, why don't I try, you know, do you want me to try with accent? He's like, yeah, let's try it both ways. And then when I got on set, they were like, no, just do it with your regular voice. And then I did a whole season of this guy that just sort of was this, you know, regular guy. And, uh, um, so I was, I, I was, was it was you know I was privileged to to get to do that and then when Outsource came, you know this was a show uh, that took place in India, right? Like sometimes I feel like yeah, there are stuff where you're just like, hey, we're just gonna do this with a funny Indian accent because we just want to you know we want to make fun of the Indian accent and I and I get that and I and I and I get how how that can be you know offensive and it can be um, you know problematic, but with Outsourced at least what, and you know, there's people who disagree with me, but I don't feel like uh, the humor came out of the character's accents. You know, they, uh, this was 22 episodes. These were the, the leads of the, of the show. They were in India, so they couldn't be doing an American accent. And, and um, I, I, I don't know. I, I felt like they were, it was probably the most well-rounded South Asian characters that you'd seen in a long time on television. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see a problem with it, but I know like there's certain, like I think Aziz Ansari and Hari Kondabalu are very 
assertive about that stuff now. So wanted to hear your thoughts. No, on I, that. you know, and you know, everybody has their point of view and I would never, mm-hmm. uh, but my um, feeling about it is, is that if it makes sense for the, sh- you know, if it makes sense for the show, like this made sense. I don't know that outsourcing was such a big, big deal at that time. Like this was a, you know, it still is, but there, there this was a, it was ripe for comedy, right? Like this, out, mm-hmm. the, the, the concept of it, if you were going to do a show about outsourcing and you were going to have characters in India, then they were going to have to speak with an Indian accent. <laughs> that was just what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, yep. um, I don't know, you know, there's, there, there are actors and uh, Caucasian actors and actresses the whole, all the time they, they put on accents. And we and we give them Oscars for it, right? Like we say, oh my god, they're so amazing. We give them Oscars, but as soon as a, a brown person does an accent, it's stereotypical and bad, and we should, you know. So there's there there there's definitely there's there's definitely a larger discussion to be had about that. <laughs> so walk us through. I'd love to know like the process. So every how did you get on outsourced? How was the feeling being on a top rated network show? And then how does one deal with uh? deal with it when a show gets canceled and how do you kind of find your next opportunity oh, be emotional distress <laughs> for me right now <laughs> no, 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 i'm no. sorry <laughs> i'm gonna start crying in the middle of this <laughs> um okay so how did i get on outsource it's actually a very interesting story i i don't know how much you or the listeners know about the process of of how it works to get on a show, it's it's a very long process, but basically there's pilot season that happens sort of like mid January of every year, or that was what used to happen. Now it's sort of all year, but like you know, there's still a little bit of a pilot season that starts in January. It ends sort of like the end of March, and what you do is you go and you audition for a bunch of different pilots, right? Uh, that are going to that are that are going to be shot, and that year I there was another. South Asian pilot called Nevermind Nirvana or, or, has, or nearly Nirvana or something like that, which had a South Asian cast. And the lead character at that time was a 30 something odd year old uh, uh, Indian American. And that was the role that everybody wanted, right? Like it was an Indian American. It was a multi-camera comedy. And that was the, that was the, the coveted pilot and the coveted role for, for South Asian. And um, I, I, I went in, they hated me. I didn't, I didn't go anywhere and I cried my eyes out and I, I just couldn't, I, I, I couldn't understand. I was like, Oh, but I, you know, I do comedy and I'm the right age and all this stuff. And it just, it just wasn't happening. And then I got an audition for outsourced and I went in for, actually I got called in for the role of uh, Gupta, which is the role that Pervesh China plays in the, in, in the show. And, I, mm-hmm. I, I felt like I gave an amazing audition. I felt really good about it. They wanted me to improv. They were laughing a lot. So going for the audition, I get a call saying that they want to screen test me. So what screen test is, is that you go in and it's between you and, you know, some, it can be up to five people. And you go and you audition for the studio and for the network. And then they will decide between uh, at that time what... Um, uh, who they're who they're going to get cast, and that happens for every role. So every role in the pilot will 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 test, and so I they they wanted me to test for that role, which was Gupta. So in the process of that, I while I was waiting to test for that, I auditioned for another pilot that had was that was starring Martin Sheen. Uh, not sorry, not not Martin Sheen, Martin Short. I can't believe I made that mistake. Martin Short, Martin Sheen, <laughs> but I can't believe I made that mistake. And then I and then I. I went in for that and I had a great audition for that and they wanted to test me for that. But the way that it works is that you can't simultaneously test for two pilots. So you have to decide which one. And then if you end up getting that one, you're sort of locked into that contract, right? Like you sign the contract before you walk in. So the studio knows that if they choose you, you cannot walk away from this. So I had to decide at that point, would I go and audition? Would I test for outsource or would I test for this other show, which was called Taxman? And um, because outsource was happening first, I thought, well, I should go ahead and test for it. And if I get it, great. And if I don't, then I still maybe can test for for taxman if I don't book outsourced. Mm-hmm. So I okay. go in and I and it's two days of test. They're they're gonna tape everything and then they're gonna send it to the studio network. I I I go in and I'm t- I'm testing, and the person that's testing opposite me is Pervez China, who's a really good friend of mine, and. 
you can tell, right? Like you can tell when you're there, like we were there for like two whole days and we were like going in and doing the scenes and and you could just see that, 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 that it wasn't going my way, even though I felt like they liked me, it just wasn't going my way. Like this wasn't happening. And then basically after the two days, um, I think within 24 hours, I got a call saying that I didn't get the part. And I cried and I cried and I cried and I was so upset. But then I said, oh, wait, maybe I can. So I called my agent. I was like, what about that one? And they hadn't, they were, they were, they hadn't tested for that other role, the tax man role. And they said, okay, they're going to test you. We're going to do the contract. We're going to get, so I was like very excited now. I was crying and I'm, this is the way it is. Right? You know, <laughs> oh my God, my career's over. I'm never going to work again. I'm going to be famous. That's that's literally like what happens every 20 minutes of my life while this is happening. Um, so that contract was going on. And then, you know, the day before, uh, the so the day before the test was supposed to happen, I was supposed to be working on, I got a, I hope you can edit, edit out my, my, my rumbling, but I was, I, I had, I, I booked a guest star on Glee. I was, and my character's name was, uh, um, Dr. Gidwani. And I had already, uh, I had already booked the, that part. And so I was supposed to shoot that the day, um, the, the day before, um, uh, uh, the test for tax mat. Now, Cut to two days before that, sh- me shooting that. I get a. I'm I'm driving. My wife is out of town. She's uh, gone to Florida, and she has. Uh, she's got a company meeting. I'm alone with my. I think like she's like one year old. Uh, uh, she's one at the time, Ayana, and it's the first time I'm alone with her, and I'm like you know freaking out because I don't know what I'm doing, and I get a call. Um, and uh, I'm in the car and it's my manager. And she's like, are you sitting down? I said, well, I'm in the car. Well, she's like, well, park the car. And I, and I, she said, and I said, what's going on? She's like, they want you to s- test for Rajiv on outsource. Wow. And I'm like, I don't understand. I, like, I, I, it didn't make any sense to me. I had never read. I had never read for it, right? Like, I didn't mm-hmm. audition for it. Uh, I was like, I don't understand what that means. Do you want me to test? Like, do they want me to come in and audition? Because there's a whole process, right? Like, you audition, you audition again. Then they decide they want to test. No, they want you to come in tomorrow morning and they want you to test for it. It's 13, I think it was like 13 pages of sides, 13 pages of dialogue that I had to like memorize. And I had, my wife was out of town and I had my daughter with me. I was like, what am I going to do? So I freaked out and then I called my friends, uh, uh, Ali Mauji and Saryu Blue, who right now is on. Oh yeah, she's on that new show. I feel bad, yeah. And I said, look, I'm, I, I need you guys to help me. So Ali um, came over, we, I put my daughter to bed and then he ran it with me like for several hours, just running it, running it, running it. The next, um, the next morning I had the, you know, our, our, our nanny had come. And so she was able to take care of uh, Ayana and I went out to lunch with my friend Saryu and she ran it with me, ran it with me, ran it with me. And then I go to the, uh, um, I, I go to the, I go to the test. Now, mind you, I had um, I had this other test coming up, right? The tax man, but I had to forego it again. So they were they were again saying that um, I wouldn't do that tax man. Now, what we had done because I knew that the the tax man test was coming up was we had told uh, outsource that they had to let me know within twenty four hours. Like they couldn't. Usually, they're allowed to wait up to five business days to give you an answer. But we had said that we in the contract they had to tell me within twenty four hours because. Uh, taxman was coming up and if 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 i didn't get it i didn't want to lose the opportunity to so we had put it in the contract so i go in i have a fairly mediocre test at one point um i i felt like one of the scenes went really badly and i said hey do you want to do it again and they were like yeah that's fine and that's usually a the kiss of death right like when they're like it's fine <laughs> I thought it was terrible it's usually like um that means that they, they they weren't feeling it and then i basically i think there was like four scenes and i did only three of them and i and they were like okay thanks and i left <laughs> and I left the room. I'm walking on the universal lot and the cast director comes running after me. She's like, we forgot to do one scene. I'm like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> because if you, it was like one of the main scenes. And I'm like, wait, how are they going to cast me without me doing that scene? It was probably, <laughs> So I go back and I do that scene. And then, you know, and then, you know, I, I do the test. And then of course, chrono- chronology wise, the next day I was shooting glee. I had a blackberry. My battery was dying. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't find anywhere to plug it in. It was like craziness. Um, 
And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I think I'm like 5%. I'm in the middle of like shooting Glee. And I get a call from my agent. Uh, and he has my manager online. He's like, you booked it. And I'm freaking out. And I don't know. And then I have to go back to set. And, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, that that was the that was it was like a kind of like a crazy thing and the funny thing is the character i was playing on glee was dr gidwani and my character on outsource was rajiv gidwani <laughs> so original. weird yeah so yeah that's, that's awesome that's that. a great story that was a lot of emotion i could feel your wife was like i'm so glad i was out of town <laughs> yes and then she i didn't tell her i and then uh yeah, she she flew back. I I went to go get her from the airport, and she's like, "What's going on?" And I'm like, "I booked outsourced." <laughs> and then I'm guessing you cried when it got canceled, or was that was that something that was there something else in store for you? Yeah, no. So here's what happened with um, uh, outsourced. So we didn't like it. You know, we were doing really well. We actually were, I think, the number one or number two new comedy, like the by, by ratings wise, that premiered. So uh, I think people s- seem to think that it didn't do well ratings wise, but it it was doing well, and it was at nine thirty after the office. It, the ratings were 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 great. We got the back nine, uh, which is the you know additional episodes, and then when they were making the decision to 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 um, you know for January of where to put it on the schedule, they ended up putting it at ten thirty, and there hadn't I think in ten years there hadn't been a comedy uh, at ten thirty at night. And they put us out at 10.30 at night. And we still weren't doing badly. We were doing, you know, actually our ratings were, I think, better than Community at that time, which was on at 8. And, uh, and we, we thought, you know, it's not, it's not a super hit. But we thought, based on what, el- what else is uh, being picked up, we thought we were going to get another season, right? Like, we just thought that's what was happening. Now, NBC ended up being bought by Comcast. So there was a bunch of, like, re, you know, re-juggling of what was going on. And then, uh, you know, we, it wasn't a short thing. So we were still auditioning. for It was pilot season. Bef- right, right before they make the decision, it's pilot season. And so we were auditioning for other pilots. And I actually got a test for another pilot. Another, it was an Indian American role. And uh, I really liked the role. And I, got, I was about to go test for it. And then we got a call from the studio, which at that time was Warner Brothers, that the test was for. And they said, we can't have... Uh, we, we're not a, our studio won't allow us to test Rizwan because we think outsource is getting picked up. We are being we are being told by the network that they think that outsource ha- is going to get picked up, so we don't want to take that chance by testing him for for this show. So I ended up not being able to test for that show, and then I thought, wait, wait we're going to get picked up. Like that's just what I thought. Like if this was, mm-hmm. if this was the intel that was going on, it's all very like covert and there's like, spies. And I don't know, but we thought we were getting picked up, and uh, and then you know it was literally down at least that's how we were told literally down to the wire and i got a you know we knew the day the day that we were supposed to find out and me and pervash and anisha who plays madhuri on the show we were just at uh, at uh, um uh, my apartment at that time and we were just waiting we were waiting for the call and i got a call from the executive producer saying you know it just wasn't going to go any further and we were all there the three of us were there together we just cried so I want to change topics a little bit. Um, I want to go a little bit into like insecurities and body image. I know wow. you have rosacea, which okay. is a skin condition that causes redness of your face. Yes. And I just want to, I want to le- know more about, I know, like I said, a lot of people have insecurities and body images and don't want to be in front of a camera or an audience. How do you overcome that? It's, it's, it's stressful. I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie and say it's not stressful. The, the good thing is, is that, you know, it can be covered by makeup, right? Like a lot of the times it's hard when you're auditioning because I don't put on makeup when I go to an audition. So it's still, it looks red and it looks, and also I have, I have cystic rosacea. So I get bumps as well, which, you know, it's not there all the time, but it, it can get, it can flare up and it can get really bad. And I'm on and off a lot of antibiotics and, uh, you know, topical creams and stuff like that. It, it's, it's, it's hard. I've had it you know, I think it started when I, it actually started in my, when I, when I turned 30, I think. And, um, it's, it, it's difficult cause you're on camera been dealing with it, right? Like a lot of times, mostly it's just in my regular life. Like people will be like, Hey, what's going on? Either you've got a lot of sun or what's, <laughs> I was, I was in Portugal, you were in Portugal. We were both in Portugal for, for, for something. And, um, somebody over there said to me, she's like, Oh my God, 
did you get bitten by mosquitoes? And I had to just be like, no, oh I didn't. I was like, <laughs> probably, but that's not what you're seeing. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's a lot of that. Uh, yeah. So, you know, what can you do? There's, there's really, there's, there's no real cure for rosacea. You just mm-hmm. have to sort of, you know, manage it is, and that's what I did. Right. Did you ever hide? Like, did you ever not want to quit acting because of it? Or have you always just persevered through it? Yeah, you know, I've been frustrated by it. I, it's not, a, I don't think I've ever been like, I'm going to quit because of the way I've been frustrated by it. I've, I've a couple times I'm like, oh, I don't really want to, I don't want to go to this audition, right? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to go in and look like this. But it's, it's just, it's more than anything. I've, I, I have been frustrated. Like, I, been in the dermatologist's office going look there's got to be something i'll do anything i will stop eating but whatever just tell me what to tell me what to do and i'll do it and uh it's hard because you just never know what's going to trigger a a Mm flare-up so last question before the lightning round what advice do you have for creatives on their journey um not to quit i guess (laughs) <laughs> you guess you're not sure yet <laughs> yeah now that you're saying it i'm like should i quit no no i i actually i do that's what i i do think and the other thing that i tell a lot of a lot of people is that um don't be complacent about it you know I think a lot of people, especially in our business, like you'll, you'll find an agent and you'll find a manager and then you'll be like, okay, they're doing all the work. Like they're going to, they're going to, the phone's going to ring and they're going to call me and tell me I'm famous. Like they're going to tell me I'm on, you know, and that just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you have, you, no one's going to be as motivated and as interested in your career as you are. So you used to constantly need to be networking and, 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 uh, you know, having a relationship with your manager and agent and asking about these and think, uh, you know, uh, being informed about what's, what's being, what's shooting, what's happening, all that stuff. You, you, you need to be uh, proactive about it instead of now I'll just wait around and somebody will call me in and all of a sudden, you know, I'm sure there's people that happens to, and I hate them all, but it just happened to me. <laughs> So let's jump into the lightning round. The lightning round is I'm going to ask you five questions, rapid fire, and just give me the first thing you think of. Okay. Okay. So what's the best piece of advice you've received? Don't oh, sit on your hands while you're auditioning. Sit on your hands or don't sit, sit on your hands? Sit on your hands. Sit. Okay. What is that for? Um, I... Sorry, it's, like, it's not rapid fire at all. So remember I told you like I'm very expressive. I, I'm, I'm assuming oh, yeah. you're asking me about acting. There's obviously be- more better pieces of advice in my life. <laughs> but since my mind is on acting, I'm going to... Uh, okay, I, now that you said for acting, I was like, why would you sit on your hand? <laughs> so yeah, it's for acting. So basically, I I was going... I was... Um, I would there was a show called earring and they would call me in for every episode. They would call me in and I would audition for every episode and I would get really far and I would never get the job. And then one time the casting director was like, you know, in the room, we loved him and we were going to cast him. And then we saw the tape and he looked, he, he just was, he was moving around so much and it, and it looked very um, chaotic. And a friend of mine, um, I think it was Purva, Purva Bedi, who was an American Daisy with me. She's like, why don't you, go in and just sit on your hands. That way you won't <laughs> feel like you uh, you won't need to. And I did it. And I ended up getting the, the next time I went in there, I got the job. <laughs> what is your definition of success? Um, perseverance. Yeah. You, I love how you, you I question. Your I feel like I, I was like, I don't want to sound dumb. Just maybe don't make me sound dumb. <laughs> you don't sound dumb. <laughs> Who inspires you and why? It's really funny. I think I think my children inspire me. What's a habit that's helped you on your journey? Paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. It's actually helped me. This like this this fear of never working and never earning any money is sort of helped me just completely be insane in this business. What do you want your legacy to be? That I was a good person. Riz, if people wanted to find you online, what's your social media? Uh my Twitter is Riz underscore Manji, which is M-A-N-J-I. Um, and then my Instagram is Rizwan Manji. And I have a Facebook page. And if people wanted to find you right now on their TV, where could they find you? I'm on The Magicians, 
which is on Sci-Fi Channel. I'm on Shit's Creek, which is on CBC and Pop and Netflix. And then I was in last season's Mr. Robot. Oh, and my Christmas movie, not my Christmas movie, but I Christmas <laughs> movie that's going to be premiering on Lifetime on November 30th. And it's called A Very Nutty Christmas. And it stars Melissa Joan Hart, Marissa Jarrett Winokur, Barry Watson, and me. So I'm very excited. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Hey, before you hit pause, did you find this episode helpful and enjoyable? If so, could you leave an Apple podcast, aka iTunes review? It'll take you less than one minute and mean the world to me. The more ratings and reviews the show gets, the more people are able to find this podcast. If you're unsure how to leave a review, no worries. If you're on your iPhone or iPad, go to the homepage of this show and scroll down to write a review. Click on it and you'll be able to rate and review the show. If you're on a Mac from iTunes, go to the show homepage and on the top, click ratings and reviews. Also, please subscribe to get the latest episodes once they drop. If you enjoy the episode and know someone who would love it, please share. From your iPhone, click on the icon with three dots and then share via social media, email, or text. If you want to hear more, head over to funnybrowngirl.com forward slash podcast. You can also find me online. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Funny Brown Girl. Also, sign up for my free newsletter for more tips to advance your creative journey at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And again, if you enjoyed the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Bye.